Ishiro-san, how are you doing? Takahashi, once again, here we are. Yes, here we are, successful movie producers. I'm gonna tell you what I just recently acquired, my good friend. Well, let me just say, first of all, it's great being here in 1984. Right, it's a fantastic year. There's no big brother watching us at all. That Orwell guy was out of his mind. A loser! Who did he ever beat? That's what I'm saying. He's just a crackpot. So what did you get? Well, I actually... I actually recently acquired the uh, the rights to that uh, fantastic movie that came out a couple years ago, uh, The Howling. Ooh, I like that werewolf one. Yeah, lots of werewolf stuff. It's the big thing happening right now. The kids, they love them. And uh, we now have the rights to the name and the characters, and we're going to be making a sequel. Ooh, we should probably test it though. We're going to actually. I have brought my um my you know my ne niece and nephew again. Uh, we're gonna use them as the focus group because we don't. Okay. You know, we're not gonna pay anybody anything. That uh, went so well last time. It did. It did. It went really quite well actually. I was really pleased with how that whole thing washed out. So, uh, Susan, can you send in the focus group? Hey, kids. Hey, hey gummy bears. Hey, 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 hey. Susan, can I get that water, please? Thank you. Gummy bears uh, for after, okay? You, you always focus. say that. Focus. That's what it's a focus group. You need to focus on this. Then you get the gummy bears. Okay. 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 All right. Gummy bears. So, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so you kids, you guys like uh, you guys like the scary movies, there, right? Uh, you like the horror movies with the werewolves and things. They're too scary. I, do. I like unicorns. Werewolves okay. are cool. Well, yeah, I think you like this. It's kind of like unicorns. It is. They uh, werewolves are mystical type creatures. Um, so we're go we're gonna make a movie. Uh, me and Uncle Ishiro here. Uh, we're gonna make a movie uh, about werewolves. Uh, but we need uh, some input from you, uh, youthful type persons. They should poop rainbows. And Good we're plan. We're gonna put that in the maybe pile. Yeah, that that's a maybe. Hey, 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 hey here's a here's a gummy bear. Good idea. Gummy bear. All right. So now we're gonna run some things past you. Uh, you guys like um boobs, right? No. What? Boobs. You know things. My little brother eats off of those. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. What an adult? Pardon me. <laughs> but this is what mom was talking about. Okay, yeah. listen, listen, listen. Because it's so uncle intro. Shut up, the two of you. Hey, kids! Knock it off. Okay? Wait on listen. the water. Susan's bringing you water. Shut up. Hey, the gummy bear. Listen, what your parents do, don't know ain't gonna hurt you, okay? Yeah. So listen. You know, mom said you would say that, and I'm supposed to scream da stranger danger. Uh, how am I a stranger? I'm your uncle. Can't be stranger danger. Shutting that down right now. Okay. Hashtag time's up. Hey, it's 1984. You mean mind. pound sign? Because it's 1984. What the hell is a hashtag? What we're going to do is we're going to make a movie with werewolves and boobs. And werewolves My dad has having a movie orgies. Like that. And also the guy What's from Space Mutiny is going to be Is it related to an orange? It kind of is, yeah. There's yes. a lot of, uh, there's a a lot of uh, peeling and whatnot involved. Also, kids, uh, you guys like vampires too, right? No, they're scary. Good. Well, what is Christopher Lee's some vampire in stuff in too? Don't worry about it. Right. What is this thriller? No, I don't no, know. No, what nothing is. at all. Watch like that. I'm gonna tell mom. Ooh, let's throw in zombies and stuff too. And you weren't supposed to watch that. I'm gonna tell mom. All right. You better not listen. tell. Here's the real twist, kids. And I think you're really gonna like this. The movie uh -huh. is going to be slightly autobiographical uh, to uh, my nephew over here. What? How? What? Well, I hate to break it to you there, kid, but um, your sister's a werewolf. You know when I pick up a beer, that's when I'm on to pressure now. The question always comes back to me.
it's our spooky movie month. <laughs> yes, horrifying in yep. that people thought this was a good idea to make this movie. Well, who are you, sir? Who? Oh, I'm Nathan. Yeah, and I'm Brendan. <laughs> Calm down there, Elvira. Everything I say in this episode is going to have a spooky pun. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> An hour and a half of just spooky puns and boo! Welcome to What Were They Thinking? Yes, we talk about bad movies. We do. Yes. And, and we've boy, got. How a... does this one fit into the category? Holy shit, we have a doozy for you guys this week. Yeah. We, uh, but Nathan, but unlike Brain Scan, which was uh, last month, which we managed to somehow get through just the two of us. Yes. This one, we needed some assistance. <laughs> yeah, you need help with uh, with the heavy lifting on ones like this. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you may have previously heard them as the uh, niece and nephew of Takahashi and Ishiro-san. The ones, the onlys, Steven and Izzy of everything I learned from movies. Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> and by Steven, I mean Vincent Price. Uh, no, I think that, I, that, more, that was more Christopher Lee, I think. Or but... more Thurl Ravenclaw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, good old Thurl Raven... Ravencroft. Ravencroft. What would yeah. Elmer Fudd say about this? I think it might go a little bit like this. <laughs> <I'm> not... <laughs> Anyhow. End of line. Welcome. Yes, thanks so, for having us, guys. So, Howling 2. <laughs> yeah, we are talking about Howling 2, uh, Your Sister is a Werewolf. That is the entire title of the movie. Alternatively, also called Howling 2, Sturba, Werewolf Bitch. Yeah. Yeah. So why did they go with the dot, 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 Your Sister is a Werewolf part? <laughs> Neither title, I don't think, was actually put through a focus group. I'm just going <laughs> to throw that out there. They really could use those kids. Or any kind of focus or thinking. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but this is a, um, a follow-up to the rather successful first movie, The Howling, released in 1981, directed by Joe Dante, yeah. uh, the first one, who also did, of course, uh, the Gremlins movies and other stuff. <laughs> Dante's Peak? No, wait. No, else. that's not, no, that's, that's <laughs> no, not, not at all. Da Dante's Inferno? Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, Joe versus the volcano. No, that's no, that's no, oh, no. That was somebody else too. Um... He did. He did some some good movies, guys. Just trust me. He did one called <laughs> okay. the Box, which was quite good. Mm. Oh yeah, Frank Langella. <laughs> yeah, Box. Well, Cameron Diaz. Yeah. Wait, oh, no, no, that's not uh, that one. Oh wait, that's, that's uh, oh, Richard... a different one. Yeah, it's a different one. Something. Hot start. Already off the rails. Didn't even talk about the background. Of the movie. Okay. So, okay. this is, uh, so this movie is often recognized, uh, just in a general sense as one of the worst and or least necessary sequels of all time <laughs> by pretty much everyone. Yeah. Um, it was, now, here's the thing. So, most of this movie was filmed in Czechoslovakia behind the Iron Curtain. So, at all times during the filming, there are, like, actual KGB spies just staring out at the cast and crew while they're trying to film. Apparently, uh, Christopher Lee, who is in this movie somehow, and uh, Sybil Danning, an, an actress in the movie, were at a restaurant and they noticed the same strange man watching them eat every night. Um, and then another thing was that lead actor Red Brown said when he called home to talk to his girlfriend, he could sometimes hear uh, coughing or breathing on the line as if someone was listening in. Yeah. So everyone was on high alert <laughs> during the entire <laughs> the height of the Cold War. I mean, of this movie in Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were probably filming Rocky IV around the same time too. So, <laughs> possibly, aka the greatest movie ever made. Right. Uh, I think you mean wait, Howling Two. Rocky, no, Rocky, IV. Rocky IV. You know, it, from the BFI Top One Hundred. <laughs> Not not accurate. It is the film one hundred percent accurate. So. No, no, the greatness. I'm not disputing the BFI. I'm disputing. 
but you might just I mean, need to research it. Wait, still every, on the pretty sure I saw it on the internet. <laughs> every great movie, guys, I think we all have to agree. Every great movie needs a great song. Oh, and God. this movie, and only one. <laughs> and, uh, and this movie has a great song. I just want to play a little bit of it right now for oh, your God, please, no. pleasure. Yes. Oh, yes. So uh, there you may have ripping sound. noises in that song. Yeah, <laughs> I like the. Uh, we will just <laughs> we will we will talk about what those sound effects were a little later. But uh, yeah, that is the that is the theme song. And boy, howdy! As Nathan was saying to me earlier in the week uh, while we were watching this, do they make uh, use of this song or what? Yeah, they, we mm-hmm. paid for it. We're gonna use it. So the reason for that is this band that 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 did this howling song. Uh, decided to tr- originally recorded other music for the movie. It was all scrapped, and <laughs> so they put in some incidental music. So they were gonna like you know replace it later with whatever. Uh, that was scrapped. So the band said, "Hey, this song is pretty great. Let's just use it through the whole movie." And the director thought that is a good idea. Nobody else did. The director did. And oh, that's, that's a great idea. Oof. I like, the, I like the band from Hobgoblins better than these guys. <laughs> it stinks. Pig sticker, not in the kiss. So we start off this werewolf uh, sequel with, with a sweet Christopher Bauhaus Lee. video. What? It's a sweet Bauhaus video. Like it's all oh, no. goth and. Oh no, and... we start this movie with Christopher Lee in space. Oh my god, you're space. right. How could I forget? <laughs> in space! <laughs> Chris in space. <laughs> and this is what he says. Okay, I actually wrote it down, took the time to write it down. He says he's he's standing there in space. It looks like they filmed it in about ten like five minutes. And he's like literally reading his script from a book. <laughs> and he says, For it is written. The inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with her blood, and I saw her sit upon the hairy beast, and she held forth a golden chalice of the filthiness of her fornications, and upon her forehead was written, Behold, I am the great mother of harlots and all abominations of the earth. Credits. It's my, uh, Wait, Tinder did he say credits? Yeah. Actually. He does, yeah. Completion <laughs> scene! <laughs> credits. It also says, scene. did you guys catch the credit that said it, this is based on a novel? Yes. yes. Yes, I did. Oh yeah. I actually oh. have the note novel. What the fuck? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I looked that up too, and apparently this is uh, closer to the source material than the original Howling was. <laughs> That's amazing. That is a case study in you don't always have to be close to the source material. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at the Running Man, right? <laughs> That's right. Oh my god. So we start out with, uh, we're in Los Angeles, which they tell us is the City of the Angels. Yeah, like you didn't already know. (laughs) Yeah, just so you know, this is also the nickname of the town. Oh, and this is the only, this is one of like two title cards we get in the entire movie, because obviously time passes in this movie, but the only other time we get a title card is when it's like the next afternoon, just randomly in the middle of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) But Dee Wallace from the first one, of course, played Karen White. She died at the end of the first movie. Spoiler alert! And in this in this flick, uh, it's her funeral right at the top. Clearly, by the way, not played by D. Wallace in this movie. No. Oh my god, they didn't even try. This woman looks nothing like like her, even a little bit. I like I was confused because I'm well, like, you, no, this isn't her her funeral. Well, so much so that I actually had to go back and check her character's name from the first one because yeah. it's like, was it Karen? Is like, it because yeah. in in the uh, spirit of it being filmed in Czechoslovakia, they got an Eastern European knockoff, which looks very little like her whatsoever. <laughs> and it's not even so much like, here's my thing. If you can't get the actress, uh, understandably the character has died off. So why would D Wallace want to come back and do it anyway? But if you can't get the actress, 
don't show her face. Yeah, don't, don't have an open to. casket funeral. You don't. Close casket. <laughs> so easy. Exactly. And if you want to have her, you know, the werewolf scene that comes up later, that's fine because she's a werewolf. But yeah. Yeah, well, you don't... And then the werewolf they get doesn't look like even like the werewolf her at the end of the other movie. Because like, well, the other one was blonder. Well, the werewolves in this movie don't look like werewolves. Let's <laughs> no. just say that right off the bat. They look uh, very Eastern European. <laughs> Uh, when we get to that, there's a, I have a little note about the, some behind the scenes about that as well. Okay. But <laughs> they, they just recruited Armenian gypsies. You're not far off. Uh, <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> so right off the bat, I think you can kind of tell that the producers of this movie really wanted to make a vampire movie because there's a lot of like vampire stuff, like the blood and like the just like the way they walk and talk, and they're they're like because as far as I know, uh, werewolves. The only thing that's like, you know, when they're not werewolves, they're normal people, right? Yes. They're not like, you know, evil, and then they turn into a werewolf and get evil and violent. Like, as if the movie Wolf is to be believed. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't James know. Spader I mean, was pretty evil. The, the well, documentary Wolf? <laughs> yes, the documentary depend. Wolf starring Jack Nicholson. <laughs> it does depend on what story you're looking at, because, I mean, if you watch something like True Blood, they are aware of what they are. They run in packs and they, they, they have their own, I guess, werewolf agenda, if you will. Uh, Mm. so it's, it is conceivable that they would at least be in a pack considering they're wolves and they're supposed to be pack animals. I don't feel, however, that they would be as, uh, S and M as these folk were. (laughs) Look, it does, just because this particular group was S and M doesn't mean all werewolves are. We just happen to find a super kinky group. <laughs> there are groups where... of people who are into this, right? So I what you're saying, like like Hanfabric, whatever it is. Hey, so werewolves can saying... be perverts too. Like, come on, that's true. Let them do their thing. So, Izzy, are you saying that we're engaging in a werewolf profiling right now? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That is what and we are. Uh, as an American, I stand against that. We should not be like <laughs> like anthropists. That I got it right. Oh, first try. Nice. Uh, also, I love Christopher. So Christopher Lee's name in this movie is Stefan Crossco. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very vampire hunter. Yes. It's got the word cross mean, whole, right in it. Yeah, this whole thing. Oh, my God. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> but this whole thing reeks of like. It, it reeks, just that's feels for sure. Like, yes. But it, it, it feels like a vampire movie. That just happens to have werewolves. Yeah, it's like Underworld. Yeah, but Underworld had the decency to have vampires in it. <laughs> yeah, but it but this movie at least had the decency to have full frontal nudity. Yeah. Fair. That's fair. A, the a few times. A few times. Scene every ten minutes. <laughs> oh boy. So okay, that's what we have to talk about too. This movie makes very liberal uh very uh liberal use of the shots they did get. <laughs> because I think we repeat shots about twenty times each. Yeah, of it's like faces like... becoming quote unquote werewolves. Uh, you know, transformation scenes, sort of uh, paws swiped at people's faces. Like it all looks very familiar, and it's because we saw it for the fifteenth time each time. <laughs> the the music video with the band. <laughs> well, <laughs> by the way, by the way, that. Okay, having them perform at the beginning. So this band performs this howling song, which is like all fine and dandy at the beginning. But then later on, when they're not even in the same location, we suddenly go back to that club. Yes. That made no sense. Well, <laughs> like, it's like it's like when you're in a movie and you're like, oh, where's that music coming from? And like, <laughs> and meanwhile, this... across town... Well, this... <laughs> the for the <laughs> yeah, this... this... <laughs> This movie thinks that the 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 answer people are looking for is like you said, Steve. Where is that music coming from? Oh, we better tell them and show them the band again. <laughs> he ran Just out of so- footage. Now, by the way, that concert man, like it's a mosh pit up front and an orgy in the back. That's which, my by kind the of way, concert. which by the way, that concert was almost shut down because oh. they were in in uh, it, where they were filming. The only time you could have concerts is during the day at the time. Mm-hmm. And you had to remain seated the entire time in the crowd, and then when it ended, you have to le- you had to leave in a respectful and quiet manner. So <laughs> certainly no mosh pitting. 
certainly no crowd surfing so when they showed up to the set these like whatever like kgb or whatever and they said yeah you need to like you need to like leave now the director explained they were filming a movie and they said okay cool so you need to leave three people at a time now (laughs) (laughs) it's kind of a modern miracle that they got this scene shot at all i I have to ask what what were they thinking but do you own a copy of trivial pursuit the Howling 2 edition? <laughs> uh, well, of course. Okay. Prize possession. They're expensive to get on eBay. They are, very. By the way, don't ever play him at it. You'll lose. Obviously. <laughs> but I'm better at the Howling 3, the Marsupials Trivial Pursuit edition. That, mm. Oh, don't spoil it for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, we well, we'll talk look- about the funeral. Well, moreover, the, the cemetery procession. Yeah. Because yeah, let's talk about that. The ki- the extras that they got, one of the kids looked just so ridiculously bored. And not like <laughs> a, a grieving kind of way. She's like, ah, da, 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 da. like, just absolutely would rather be anywhere else than there. I, I think that's so I for think a funeral, that, could, I would think. that could be used accurately yeah. to describe Christopher Lee in 90% of this movie as well. This is also true. <laughs> <laughs> but... At this at this cemetery, we get so we get to Christopher Lee uh, showing up and confronting the brother of the uh, Karen from the Howling One, which I love when Played sequels by just punch introduce hard cheese. <laughs> oh yeah, the guy from uh, what is it again? Space Mutiny. Yeah, Clint I, Sidearm. I love when uh, sequels just randomly introduce like a sibling character. Of the baby, <laughs> like Easy Rider Two. <laughs> oh, by the way, he had a brother and another brother, and his father was a. Blah, 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 blah. And we're not going to talk about Easy Rider Two, but you know what I mean. I get it, yes. You know what, though, like on the other hand, usually in the first ones, they don't talk much about like whether they have siblings or not. Yeah. So, like, why not? <laughs> True, but you could have an estrangement as well. But uh, I don't feel that would be the case with these two because no, they seem kind of they... affluent. They seem pretty close. Yeah. Uh, so Christopher Lee tells Ben of uh, Ben, who is the uh, brother. He says, "Your sister." He says, yeah, "Your sister is a werewolf," and okay. his reaction is amazing because his reaction is just like not like, "Oh my god, who are you? Get away from me!" He's just like, "Oh bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, this movie also makes just as much sense if you believe like I do. Or I did. Uh, I don't know why I got this in my head. I just kept pretending she was, uh, or he was her ex-husband, like the first husband. Okay. And I have no idea why that thought got in my head, but uh, wait, it made the the movie is exactly the same. Wait, Ben was his sister instead of being his sister. It's his uh, ex-wife. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah your, your it was ex- the first wife. Helen two husband. dot dot dot. Your ex-wife is a werewolf. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Your ex-wife slash sister is a werewolf. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Once a month, she gets violent. <laughs> I don't. He acted more like an ex-husband than a brother. He really did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh bullshit! <laughs> I do like that when uh, when Christopher Lee uh, says he knows the reporter lady. She's all yes. like, "How did you know my name? You're on TV, stupid!" <laughs> and he literally says, "I've seen you on television," and she's yeah. like, "Oh." Okay. It's like, oh, oh right. right, I'm a reporter. <laughs> oh right, that is the role I am playing. <laughs> so fun, fun, uh, fun fact. By the way, fun fact is fun, fun facts. Yes, it is. Um, apparently, so while Christopher Lee is acting with these people, by the way, apparently, well, obviously, I mean, that's not apparent. You you can tell that they are not good actors. These two uh, leads, Christopher Lee, at times, as soon as they yelled "cut," walked off, and the director described it as watching a man uh, wishing himself off the set, <laughs> <laughs> just quietly <laughs> in a it's, corner. So it's not even a situation where it's like, I'm cashing a check. I'm just gonna stand around. He's like. I want nothing to do with this at it, all. As soon as yeah. I cut, I'm out of here. I think the I think what happened is he heard a sequel to Joe Dante's Howling and assumed it wasn't this. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but let's get to the uh, let's so obviously so the brother the brother is not convinced that his sister was a werewolf and so they go so we go to the uh, the punk nightclub where Christopher Lee has the best sunglasses on oh ever. My God. <laughs> He's a I must go undercover and he just he has his suit but also shades. Punk rock Christopher Lee is my spirit animal. I'm just gonna say. It. <laughs> that's where of course we get the band singing the howling song. For the and, one and uh, only time. The one and only time we hear it. We never yeah. hear it again. Never hear it again. <laughs> Except every other time. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did we, did we watch alternate versions again? No, no. Uh, <laughs> hey, by the I mean, the pool scene was... Light of the moon. <laughs> oh, Luke. Oh. <laughs> um, so, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uh, punks start hitting on this on this woman who clearly we know she's going to be a werewolf it's very obvious <laughs> and uh, she's like yeah yeah I'll, I'll i'll fuck all of you come with me come with me to this abandoned warehouse and we'll just have sex yeah it goes like all mad max for like a half a second and then ah uh, romance they're gonna bone in an abandoned like mill or fucking foundry or something also logistical question here they're, how long had did they, they take to get to that warehouse? Like no because, time. Well, <laughs> no, because but it's it's pitch black out. Mm. Like at the same time as the song is going on, and by the time they get to the warehouse, it is like bright. <laughs> there, I think <laughs> like, possibly they were trying to shoot day for night and just failed miserably. Yeah, because like and then and then because they, they keep going back to the guys still singing the song, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> is this happening at the same time? I'm so confused about the timeline in this movie. <laughs> well, they're calling right now to tell me okay. all about it. No, the timeline fits. You're right. Yeah. No, I know. Look, you were doing... I get what you were going for. Day for night. Yeah. No, no, you were just... You it, You were poor at it. I don't care. Look, it's an enjoyable movie, but for the wrong... I don't... No, get off my phone. Bye. Oof. Was that I, Philippe? Good, good day, sir. Yeah, no. Right? I said good day. He he's trying to tell me that you know every decision was the right one in this movie, and I was just you know what, it was, but not for the right reasons. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so these we get to this this point here in the foundry where we find out that uh, one of the girls likes it rough. Yeah. Are you F F rough? Uh, <laughs> uh also i like the um the punk's way of being like sexually aggressive they show up to the warehouse and he's like party time and he's just doing his zipper up and down really quick <laughs> uh, <laughs> well everybody knows that's how you arouse a woman it's part well, of the dance i was gonna ask you is he is that like a thing like is that like a good bit of like uh you know like a foreplay thing is that like what, what is that for you yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, when I get into, like, a quiet area, if a guy goes, yeah, and then just starts doing a zipper up and down super quick, I'm like, oh, this is a very subtle sign that, like, he wants to get into the VIP room. <laughs> and you're, like, ready to go. Wait a second. I'm like, yeah. Is that what you call your downstairs, the VIP room? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, okay. anybody can, like, you know, take a look at the club, you know, the face, but very few people get into the VIP room. <laughs> You need a you golden. Gotta, you need a golden ticket. You need a background check. You need like your your little like ID card. Like <laughs> so, when these punks are horribly killed, like just brutally uh, mutilated, yeah, but th in this like is... Home Alone fashion at first. Yeah, one of them has like a giant box dropped on him. <laughs> 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 but, um, this is when we start to notice something is wrong with the werewolf costumes <laughs> and that is because that is because they are refurbished planet of the apes tv series costumes <laughs> so apparently they so sent sense. away for werewolf costumes you for this movie yeah <laughs> and they sent them planet of the apes not even the movie but this apparent oh, tv series so. yeah <laughs> And that is what we ended up with. And that is why the only shots of wolves you will see in this movie are usually very close up. And it's about the same two or three shots. 
<laughs> Can you imagine being that like costumer? Like, <coughs> all right, I got my huge crate all the way from Hollywood to the middle of yeah, 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 wherever we are. You pry it open. The fuck? Use Dave costumes. Oh god, the smell. <laughs> Brendan, I feel like this movie is your Ford Fairlane. <laughs> you were looking really forward to doing this so much so you did a shit ton of research like I did. It's like I've seen this movie a million times, but I need to find out more. That is uh you're not far off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I like how too with all those punks that went to go like get laid from these werewolves. One of the uh, one of them is like one of the girls they were with. Yeah, <laughs> like why is she there? Why did she come along for the trip? Yeah, they could have just boned at the club, right? Like why was she? Like, yeah, they, they're like oh, instead of traveling like all night and all day, we could, you could just like you know get a girl right here. Yeah, we don't bang uh, in the can. You know that's how things are like romantical like. Yeah, fanging and banging. There you go. Wait, no, right. they're not vampires. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Sorry. Uh, are you sure? Werewolves have werewolves fangs have too. Fangs, yeah. Uh, they have canines. Yeah. No, Dogs. they are canines. No, no the teeth. They're canines as well. <laughs> so confused. So well, confused. yeah, because they're canines, so they have teeth. They're, not... they're canine teeth. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Let's, let's get. Let's get. To... Have to. Bye, have... cuspids. Hmm. Molars. Guys. <laughs> Let's get to Christopher <laughs> Lee's. Let's get to Christopher Lee's theory of evolution. Right. I, oh God. We'll so, have our in-depth discussion about you know the intricacies of dentistry later. Because uh, they Ben and Jenny, our two leads, meet up with Christopher Lee at ben his like Jen? beard mansion. He. This is actually based on. I know again more behind the scenes, but I can't. I can't help it. There's so much, but. <laughs> This is based on, like, Christopher Lee being like, okay, so literally you guys have monkey costumes instead of werewolves. Okay, well, let's try to salvage something and try to come up with some kind of reason why that would be. So Christopher Lee has this scene here where he says, well, there's many stages of becoming a werewolf, and the first of which is becoming a monkey? Oh, what? That's what he says in this scene. I must have missed that. To yeah, be fair, he says, I started drinking. I mean, <laughs> he says uh, there are many stages. He said there are many stages to were- werewolf uh, transformation, and he points out the monkey masks on his on his like table as like being the first stage before you become a werewolf. <laughs> as as you know, as every werewolf movie explains. Uh, but, by, by the way, oh, is this uh, the Van... part where he had like evidence boards? Yes, yes, yes. Like Flowcharts and shit. <laughs> Yes, and several monkey heads all throughout his office, like, you know. As any... one does. Oh, God damn it, cat. Uh, but, uh, and he also has footage from the first Howling movie, which is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> of Karen Wolf uh, being shot during a newscast. I don't know. It's from the first movie. Apparently she, I don't remember. <laughs> no, it is well. not. It's not no, the first movie? Okay, so we watched the first movie before watching this because we heard it was a good movie, and we got them both in a DVD pack. Um, oh, we have all of them. We have all five of them in a that's, beautiful wow, set. Wow, that's yeah. dedication. We were yeah. collection, right? We're, we're crazy. Oh, uh, what is it, the Corinthian edition or whatever? <laughs> the <laughs> Criterion? Criterion? <laughs> Corinthian? The Corinthian edition. edition. It's, and it's now, a, now it's a slab said. of marble. <laughs> and now here to read the Corin- from the Corinthians, director <laughs> Philip Mora. <laughs> what if we had all the lights of the moon? <laughs> <laughs> Howling. <laughs> Howling. Yeah, so, so we watched both. Basically, at the end of the first movie, uh, Karen White, I don't even think it shows her being shot. Like, it's just kind of like she starts transforming and then you hear gunshots and it's like roll credits kind so, of thing. So here's the thing. The the footage of her being shot does look like it's from the film. The way they do it at the end of the first film is they kind of make it like, because like she's you know transforming and all of that. And then her producer, spoiler alert, goes, gets a gun and takes to take her out because like this is kind of their plan to like let the world know. And they're like, cut away, cut away. Oh, God, there's a man with a gun. I do think they shot that scene and they didn't end up using it because it did look like it yeah, was like, this... like Wallace and in, in makeup and all yeah. that. OK, I mean, it was more it was better than the rest dedicated. of this movie. I'll, I'll buy that. I, I think it was almost it, it wasn't good enough to make the first cut of the first movie, but it was stock footage from. But it was perfectly okay for the Howling Two. 
Because that scene was better than the other wolf scenes in this movie. That's, That's why yeah. I think it was from the first one. Yep. So Christopher Lee also, there's a thing a, a thing introduced here where he they try to one up the whole uh, the whole uh, werewolf thing by saying, "Hey, silver is useless against some of them. You have to use titanium." Of course. She's supposed to be the special kind. That's that's how come they wanted her so bad in the first one, is that uh, some of them are immune to the old ways. But, in, again... In to get more powerful, you need adamantium. <laughs> adamantium! <laughs> but, again, in this movie, though, like this whole revelation about how you need titanium instead of steel, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference, because in, in the later parts of the movie, they're just like, yeah, we have titanium blades, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I mean, yeah. Um, well, okay. So he he's trying to explain this whole thing <laughs> about the, <laughs> the the evolution of werewolves. Uh, ben, of course, still not believing him, but decides that hey, I think Christopher Lee is gonna go uh, stab my uh, you know ex wife slash sister in her grave to make sure. <laughs> She's at rest or whatever the shit he said. Yeah, and he's all like, "Don't stab my dead sister." It's like, what is he gonna hurt her? Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're putting her in the ground in, like, four hours. What are you worried about? Yeah. So, so uh, Ben and Jen decide to uh, team up and go kill Christopher <laughs> Lee. <laughs> but they encounter, of course, a bunch of monkey wolves. Uh, what do you call them? Ape wolves? Ape wolves. That's what Steve kept calling when we were watching. He was like, look at those ape, ape wolves go! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they shoot at a bunch of uh, ape wolves while Christopher Lee is trying to stab a dead person in the heart. And... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of like werewolf deaths here. Like, it's in the just song again. Yeah, the, song, the howling song. It's all like shot so badly that it's hard to tell what's happening sometimes. <laughs> <sighs> and we get to find out that Reb Brown is not just screechy in Space Mutiny, but he's always screechy when he's trying to get people's attention in movies. Oh, and. Can I just say my favorite part about this whole scene is there's like an elderly, an, an elderly like monkey wolf or ape yeah. wolf, and he gets shot, and then Christopher Lee is basically like, "Tell us where Sturba is." Oh, who is they, the first, leader. they catch him with a net. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. <laughs> that's what I, that, that was the part I was gonna mention. So they're asking where Sturba is, and freaking Red Brown comes from behind. He's just like, "I got a net." Oh. <laughs> a cartoonishly like. It's like a cartoonish net that he throws over the where after they've already gotten the werewolf down and it's he's been shot. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, thanks for your help, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so they t- he tells them about Sturba, the uh, the werewolf she bitch or whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> where and she they have is. To go to where? Transylvania, the dark not a country. vampire. But... And I was really movie. wishing that the Rankins would be like, heading back to the dark country with the werewolves in my eye. <laughs> Nobody... That would have been more than the budget. Oh my god, yeah, they would have had to pay for another song, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Only if like they had howling. Yeah. Howling. Heading back, heading back to the dark country, howling. <laughs> the middle of it, that would have been great. Or at least the second verse. But, again, <laughs> again, guys... They're going to Transylvania. Vampires. Yep. Like, it's just all over this movie. I would argue even, like, the commune that we see is very, like, vampire-esque. Yes. Now, not everybody in Transylvania is a vampire. Everybody. <laughs> You're being Transylvanianist. Yep. You can accuse <laughs> me of that all you want. <laughs> Brendan's clearly not woke. <laughs> No, I'm not vampire woke. There you go. Uh, stoked, staked? I don't know. Uh, is at this point we get to meet Eastern European there. Jimmy Smiths. All right. What? It's true. Yep. Yeah. I looked it up. It's not Jimmy Smiths. I which really had to check. <laughs> which, which, which gentleman is Eastern European Jimmy Smiths? Oh, the, uh, the one uh... that looks like an Eastern European Jimmy Smiths, right? <laughs> He's like the right hand for um, the you know, oh, werewolf ladies. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah, because at this point, um, so they're going to uh, to Transylvania, and <laughs> so Ben, Ben and Jen 
are driving around and they're having a little playful argument. And the best thing is, is they cut to like, they cut to like Christopher Lee in the back seat and his exasperated look on his face. I'm convinced that was not like originally part of the movie. It was just like <laughs> they sh- they accidentally shot him waiting for his scene. <laughs> I like this because, you know, chicks never stop and ask for directions. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, that's something hey. we know about girls. <laughs> Definitely not something you'd say about guys. No, guys will always ask for directions. They are, they have no qualms about that. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> you don't have hey, to now. You got a smartphone. You got the GPS there. Andrew Dice Clay, did you just I'm join so, the podcast? I, you know what? I'm going to be so happy. I've loved doing this play, uh, but I am going to be so happy when it's over because every now and then I find myself slipping into Dave Moss' voice, and it's really unsettling. <laughs> as long as you don't start throwing out like certain words around, we'll be all right. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> Oof, oof ah. Um, so the, you know they're driving around. Christopher Lee in the back. They fall for the old werewolf in the road trick. Oh, that oh. old chestnut. <laughs> that was so. That was the strangest thing ever. So they stop because there's a woman in the middle of the road, and all the villagers are like surrounding her. And then as yeah. soon as they go over, they like hilariously start stepping back slowly <laughs> from her. <laughs> She's this woman is a werewolf, and then they immediately they turn back around, and suddenly every single villager is gone. Yeah, not suspicious at all. <laughs> I'm no. so glad you came. She's hurt. Walk away. <laughs> Help this woman in the road, even though there are two hundred of us. Uh, but and then and then the best is like so right after this they they realize this woman in the road, the old woman in the road trick is a fake, and she's a werewolf. Uh, Christopher Lee is like, you know what? I'm just going to walk. <laughs> just going to walk to the village. You guys drive. I'm good. <laughs> I have had it up to here with you people. <laughs> Which is, yeah, that's like the most, that's the funniest part of the, I wonder if Christopher Lee was like, you know, at this point, just separate us because, you know, I, I don't care. <laughs> I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> I played Dracula, remember? That's why I you had me in this movie, films. and then you decided it was a werewolf movie. Fuck you guys. <laughs> you guys know The Howling was a werewolf movie, right? What? <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> of all the things we've done in our Christopher Lee impressions, that last one actually is the most believable one. You know this <laughs> is a werewolf movie, right? <laughs> I'm guessing that was said a couple times on Several set. Several times, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. Am I on the wrong set here? What 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 the fuck are we doing? Is this Planet of the Apes? So, guys, it hasn't even. We haven't even gotten to the craziest stuff yet, which is insane because we've already gone through. <laughs> we got we got through Christopher Lee in space. We got through his theory on evolution, uh, ape wolves. But now it's gonna get sexy. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. Sturba, we meet Sturba, who at first is an elderly lady. But Miss then becomes Slovakia, 1983. <laughs> <laughs> but then, <laughs> then becomes uh, Sybil Danning, and yeah. she uh, decides to have a three-way with two other werewolves because why not? Yeah. Why not indeed. Now, now what happened here They're is very uh, sexual creatures. Yes, <laughs> kind of like, kind of like vampires, right? Oh come on, vampires are all like right. dehydrated and having to like. Suck blood all the time. Come on, werewolves are literally animals. And, let's yeah, make and they sense. are. And uh, they're very similar to dogs. And they call it doggy style for a reason. I'm just going to yeah, say. Exactly. And let's not Boop, forget the other universal it. monsters like the creature from the Black Lagoon. I saw Shape of Water. I know what's yeah, up. Also, very well lubricated creature. <laughs> <laughs> But, okay, so what I was going to say is so in this, th- she has a threesome with two other werewolves. Um, so. You guys probably noticed they don't do a whole lot of physical contact. They're just they just kind of snarl at each other, and you know yeah. she has a lot of weird stuff with her hands whenever yeah. she's a werewolf. Yeah. So the reason for this is because originally <laughs> they did have physical contact. They tried to shoot it like a real sex scene, but the makeup and the the, the fake body hair was so cheap. That it just started falling off. Oh, that's <laughs> too bad. So they were, like, oh, yeah. they were like, okay, we'll just shoot this 
um, with you guys just like, you know, kind of moving your bodies around, but not actually doing anything. <laughs> we get this gem of a sex scene as but a result. that's the thing. She gets this new body. I mean, you're going to want to take something like that for a test drive. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I mean, yeah. we do see we do see her boobs. Uh, the, uh, the, only, the only time we'll see them, right, guys? Yeah, right. <laughs> she does this great scene where she rips her top off. That if only they would repeat that seventy five times during the Howling song. Best training montage ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if only they would they they would do that. You know, maybe one day, Izzy. One day. <laughs> one day more. One day, my dreams will be fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah werewolf threesome speaking of sex though that's the name of my next band by the way <laughs> werewolf, threesome? werewolf threesome i was oh, kind of hoping that was the name of the sequel <laughs> the howling threesome <laughs> oh, and then the howling four speaking of sex <laughs> the howling five your sister is a vampire <laughs> um so like I said, speaking of sex, uh, Ben and Jen start to get a little chemistry. Just kidding. They have no chemistry at all, and this makes no sense. <laughs> I was say, that's a different cut of your film. Yeah. Say, <laughs> at least the uh, the love interest in this one is age-appropriate, as opposed to the love interest he had in Space Mutiny. Uh, <laughs> I vaguely remember that, but yeah. No, yeah they're, I've they're only close ever the seen same. the Mystery Science Theater version. And that's the only one I'll ever see because I don't think I can ever watch that movie straight through. <laughs> but it's funny because, like, they go into this hotel room in room 666. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> and then Jen, Jen just kind of sits down and says, I need you to hold me. Boom. They're fucking. Yeah. With, can I with ask his a question on, too? Hashtag secured. <laughs> what was with all the amateur wipes in this movie? <laughs> yeah. Star wipes. There's like star wipe, snail wipe, another wipe. It's like, oh, it's like, I know it was 1983, but for the love of God, it was like someone it was like, I'm going to make a movie on my new, you know, video editing software that I've gotten today. It and was like, uh, like a shitty star was, wipe or a clock wipe or something. It was like Homer Simpson edited the movie. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Do we get a the, random little person at some point? I have a note. Yes! <laughs> they're like, he's not they're random. Like, he's part of the church. They're to fight werewolves. They literally go, hey, should we follow that dwarf? Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, you should. Oh, if you see a dwarf <laughs> running through an Eastern European village, you should follow him. <laughs> Worst case scenario, it's just an interesting dude to follow. Best case, he leads you to gold. Okay, you know, that's a good life, life rule. I mean, he also may need something reached if he's just a regular little person. Yeah, you could you could help him in his life. There you go. So they follow this little person uh, named Vasil, and he takes them to the church where Christopher Lee has his like Avengers. Uh, to, yeah, to they take have a sweet church meeting. <laughs> yeah, they have a church meeting. Is that well? That so, is that is that where you were earlier? You said you went to church, but I feel like you had a werewolf uh, Avengers meeting. Look, look, you know, what we talk about in church meetings is, you know, it's not for public consumption. Our first lady of lycanthropy. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk about it off air. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. Off, off the record. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, so so Ben, ben and Jen. Head over to the to this meeting. Christopher Lee introduces us to all the people in this uh, kind of werewolf assembly, of which the only one I really remembered was uh, Vasil, for obvious reasons. <laughs> later, <laughs> but the other ones are kind of other, just kind of guys. Like they're not really that interesting. But Christopher Lee hands them uh, a couple of gold medals from a cereal box. I'm guessing, and says <laughs> these will protect you. Which, by the way. Besides the fact that one of them one of them comes up uh, being held by another character later, those really never come into play. No, but uh, they, he gives them these medals. He's like, Ben is all gung ho to get this thing started, and he's like, No, we must follow this other werewolf and find Sturba, and I will kill Sturba. And Ben's like, I want to kill Sturba. It's a good scene. <laughs> Guys, take, take your it? word on that. <laughs> yeah, say, if you say so, bro. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. A anyways, 
<laughs> Where are we here? Hold on. The puppet booth. They they find a totally sweet puppet booth. <laughs> oh yeah, Christopher Lee says if you want to communicate with me, you'll have to use the puppet booth. <laughs> what? <laughs> when he said because that, because they're first... being watched. KGB don't pay attention to puppet booths. So you're saying that was an actual thing he was saying that they just happened to catch on film. Oh. Yeah. Christopher Lee yeah. was like, Mr. Mora, if you want to direct us, you'll have to use the puppet booth. <laughs> yeah, they it's had the to cut out the part way. where they go, Mr. Lee, we're ready to shoot. <laughs> 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 we're ready to begin filming now. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I need five more minutes. I need to complete being a Bond villain. <laughs> I need to complete my prayer to wish myself away from this ghastly project. Bond, we need you to we need we need help in finding Stefan Crosco. <laughs> okay, so this is also like this might be my my favorite part in the entire movie, and it's it's not even like that crazy, but just the way it happens, like so Ben and Jen have had sex one time, right? Yeah. Um so there's a, a part here where Jen is taking a bath. And Ben comes in the room, and then there's, you don't, well, you actually, you don't know who's coming in the room. It's just like a sinister lead up of someone coming in. And then Ben pops up and he's just like, boo, hi, honey. As if they've been married for like 30 years. Like, it's very like, hey, babe. How's it going? Like, well, what? Yeah, I mean, this is how guys work. I know you guys get tired of us the first time you bang us. Like, oh, I already, I already had sex with that. I already hit that. I already seen those boobs. What news? But he's not tired. He's acting like as if they're already married or something. Like, it's just very like, oh, hey, honey. They're you both com- once, dude. Take it back. Scale yeah, back. but this trip has really felt like 30 years to him. <laughs> <laughs> this movie felt like 30 years. But Transylvania, yeah, I, was, I spent a year there one week. Okay, honestly, guys, <laughs> this movie, like, it, it felt like the timeline was so weird, it could have taken place over the course of a year, and I wouldn't even know. Right? Yeah, they could have just been living there for, like, the last, like, I don't know, six years. But but then but then of course the next morning that title card comes up at some point here. <laughs> oh okay, so everything before this happened in the same day. Gotcha. <laughs> yep, all of that one day. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Um, also, the other thing was uh, when they're in the ho- when they're in the hotel, another vampire thing. She pulls out garlic and says, "This will protect us." How? It's garlic, right? Even the people in this movie think it's a vampire movie. <laughs> it's the that's one of the things in the accepted lore is that yes, okay, off and on vampires don't like garlic. It's never ever once has ever come up in werewolf lore that they have an aversion to garlic. Never. I like, well, this movie most just don't care for it. It's like uh, it's like sriracha. Like some <laughs> people just don't care for it. <laughs> I'm gonna eat you. Oh, garlic. Oh, Gar- oh not no, a fan. no, no. Uh, not oh, a God, fan. did you eat avocados? Ew. You know what, though? It would make more sense for werewolves to be, like, very, very sensitive. Uh, you, you know, more sensitive to the garlic and all that, because they're gonna have the heightened sense of smell. Get mace. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Like, what What, piss, what smells piss your dog off? Guys, I figured it out. It's titanium laced garlic. There you go. Mm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Garlic oil on that titanium blade. It's good to go. But what, you know, what really made me happy is that we went back to the werewolf threesome a bunch of times. Ugh. Oh, yeah. We just keep <laughs> going back to it. Well, because, like, this is all one day. So they're yeah. just still not done yet. Yeah, see, you guys are saying the timeline was very confusing. I'm saying, like, this is all happening, like, simultaneously. Basically, this movie is in real time. <laughs> this movie also assumes uh, everyone has a very short attention span. Like, because there's scenes, like, where Christopher Lee is talking about how deadly one of the werewolves is. And just so you know, they show a shot of her at the same time, even though we saw her maybe five minutes ago. There was a lot of coke in the 80s. You know, you, you gotta keep people focused. Cocaine's oh, a hell of a drug. You know, much like this podcast. Wait, what? <laughs> And Wait, boops. Okay. All right, There's a lot back. of coke in the podcast? <laughs> Is there a point where someone's smoking a pipe with a little person? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just trying to get us back on track here. 
Are you are you trying to say like it was like a Lord of the Rings? Uh, it was, it was, was an homage to that was, moment. Well, I don't maybe a pre homage. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying Lord of the Rings did an homage to this moment in The Howling too. <laughs> maybe <laughs> Peter maybe. Peter Jackson's favorite mil- favorite film. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite vampire movie. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, isn't it a werewolf? Movie? No. What? I, I, I guess, but fake let's news. Be real. <laughs> I New Zealand well, accent is on point. And then, it, for I mean, some reason, it turns with a into a men without hats video. It's like a, <laughs> a Renaissance fair run amok with little people, and oh my god! What it kind of reminded me of. I know we haven't talked about the movie on our show, but it reminded me of the uh, the, the the weird town in Jim Cotta. Yes. Look. <laughs> The uh, what what do the they call it? The, l- the 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 town full of uh, lunatics, the crazies or whatever. The yeah. the yeah the yeah. Where the, for some reminds- reason there's a pummel horse in the middle of the town square. Yeah, <laughs> for some reason you got to get exercise somehow. Oh, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So now uh, Ben is like, you know what? Not waiting any longer. I'm gonna take Vasil with me, and we're gonna we're gonna go get we're gonna go get Sturba. And it's gonna work out great. So they, you know, they when you go when you go after a werewolf, you got to make sure you have your uh, enchanted earplugs, which look like they're sticking teeth in their ear. <laughs> I thought they were teeth, honestly. Okay, I was like, I'm glad why I'm are the they? One. Yeah, no, I was like, <laughs> the why only are earplugs they... at work are the teeth of another werewolf or <laughs> were or whatever we're fighting. Which and guys, you know that werewolf lore where they can like, yeah, they have lasers that shoot out of their hands, and uh, that when they when they talk, uh, they make your heads explode. Uh, no, Brendan, I believe you're on methamphetamines. <laughs> uh, pretty sure, pretty sure it's in this movie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but I, but but you are right though. Okay. <laughs> both, both things are correct. <laughs> yes, and. <laughs> what? It's a yes. Yes, and. and. <laughs> Good improv yes. is what uh, Steve's getting at. Yeah, I got that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen K. <gasps> Stefan Crosco, you know my real name. I must leave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Christopher Lee. So, okay. So anyway, he goes with the uh, with Vasil. Um, their great plan is that they're just going to stare through the window at Sterba. And of course, she Who sees him right away. Is, oh, is by the way. Is petting a stuffed wolf? Uh, yeah, I didn't move, so I'm assuming. <laughs> also, guys, you notice that she's wearing sunglasses in this scene, right? Well, she wears her sunglasses at night, so she can, so she, so can she can see see the light before her eyes. Yeah, yes, and that's because she had oil in her eyes and could not see. <laughs> what? There is no cool reason for her to have sunglasses. Like they didn't think, oh, this looks badass. No, she got she went to get a massage, got oil in her eyes that basically blinded her for like three days, and she had to wear those sunglasses. Oh my god, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Everything I feel like has on the pop up video of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has a reason. <laughs> this movie, a real the life thing in reason. Filmmaking is an accident. <laughs> The thing about those Transylvanian spa mm-hmm. treatments, you really got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, with done by vampires. I, I mean werewolves. The world, werewolfiest! <laughs> yep, told you. I'm ta- I, I'll accept that. I'm good. Uh, I have a note uh, that questions what a little person said. Oh, yeah, I couldn't understand anything he said. Yeah, Killy the it... Forgotten Dwarf is my next note. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he like every because I he had I'm assuming he was a local actor because his his English is so broken I like I couldn't understand a single thing he said. Mm. Um, just the thing where he said the earplugs are blessed. Yeah, <laughs> the earplugs are also cast. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes with a free frogert. <laughs> it is also cast. <laughs> but it comes with your choice of topping. <laughs> no? So, yeah, no, the, the toppings contain. It's sodium sodium benzoate weight. or something. Can yeah. I go now? <laughs> That's bad. It'll be sunny. <laughs> um. So yes, I think, guys, we're gonna we're gonna get to one great moment here because he drops his enchanted earplugs. No. Which, by the way, I hate this movie thing where, like, you know, and then, and then <laughs> Ben is like reaching to get the earplugs. His hand is clearly like right there. 
<laughs> right on top of them, and somehow he can't quite grasp the earplugs. Right. Well, he is like hard cheese. <laughs> right? oh, I can't see them. <laughs> Be flex muscle. <laughs> oh, I don't remember any of the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Johnson. Wait a second. Uh, Red Brown. Yeah, oh, that's his real name. But the uh, the uh, dwarf's head explodes. Yeah, <laughs> and it's pretty yeah, great. Well, after he tells uh, after he tells our protagonist to like run, run away, and leave him. Hashtag not my protagonist. <laughs> Which, by the way, he can't hear you. He's got earplugs in still. <laughs> right? Yeah. You, I can't find my earplugs, huh? What? <laughs> I'm just gonna run then. That's true. If they have earplugs in their ears to prevent uh, them from hearing Sturba's uh, chanting or whatever, how can they even communicate with each other? Right? Are you saying there's a loophole in this movie? I'm saying there may be... Okay, guys, get ready for this. There may be some continuity errors. What? Liar. (laughs) It's vampires. I think you just weren't paying attention. (laughs) Well, I did did walk away for ten minutes and come back. (laughs) They were still playing that howling song. He went in to go make a pie and then came back <laughs> and i came back and then a dwarf's head was exploding and i was like oh, i'll fill in the rest <laughs> <laughs> how accurate was i so far <laughs> pretty close oh, okay. he's good at this game <laughs> um and, and, this is, and this is the part we were talking about earlier they're randomly just cutting back to that band mm. which again oh okay wasn't this like <laughs> in real time wasn't this like uh, an hour ago <laughs> It was yesterday, remember? Because we're on the new day. Right, this is the next morning. (laughs) But then they, like, Uh, what? They shut it down right at the time when everybody was orgying at 100%. And they just shut it down. So the dwarf head explosion. Okay, let's get. I gotta get past this here. Um, (laughs) It's hard. (laughs) It's definitely I know. hard to do that. It, it's a great head explosion. I do. I, do, I legitimately thought it was hilarious. What if I were to feed you the line, die fuzzball? Die what? fuzzball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Because now we're just killing werewolves. But, I mean, we got to talk about Vasil, the dwarf, being possessed as okay. well. All right. Because he comes back into town with a mask on. And they're like, oh, who could that be? Well, I don't know. Maybe the... Maybe the only dwarf in town. It could have been a kid. I honestly thought it was gonna it was gonna be like a werewolf kid, well, like voice, wearing the clothes. The voice ADR is hilarious. Gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much the voice, right? Yeah, you're 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 pretty accurate. Uh, he runs back into town, and uh, Christopher Lee is like chasing him. Like, come back here, you little scamp! <laughs> come back here, my killer dwarf! And hilariously, Ben comes in to make the save and throws him through a window <laughs> onto some convenient spikes. Yeah, midget tossing. It's a sport. Oh. <laughs> uh, I believe in that in that day and age it would have been called dwarf tossing. Yes. Actually, Ladies? well, I know there was a while there where there was a difference between a midget and a dwarf. I'm not even gonna... <laughs> no, like it was a whole thing. It was explained to me when I was a child, and then now we're just supposed to call everybody little people. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, in the movie, he is specifically known as a dwarf. Okay. So it was dwarf so tossing that. I think it's okay to call him a dwarf. Yeah. Okay. Cool. If yeah, you call people in tiptoes, even in, in people in tiptoes use that name, and that movie is uh, very accurate. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you, oh I'm sorry. God. You mean the documentary tiptoes? Yes, the documentary Tiptoe starring Matthew McConaughey. With Academy Award winner Matthew McConaughey. And a very and special a performance. Oldman. And a very special performance from Gary Oldman. And of course, <laughs> Kate Beckinsale from Underworld, who is also apparently in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so Howling 2. <laughs> Howling 2. So after he is killed, um, Jenny is captured by the, uh, the you know Sturba and her werewolves. Um, there is a giant orgy hmm. with yeah. uh, with a lot of Czechoslovakian extras that didn't understand English and started actually having real sex on camera. Yeah. Fantastic, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so when you're watching that, it's a, it's a very distinct possibility that some of those people in the shot are fucking. Oh, there you go. Excellent. Oh, that, yeah. So we've legitimately reviewed pornography. 
Yay, hey! for you guys. Suck it. Hashtag life goals. It's about time. <laughs> Hashtag yeah, winning. Steven, Steven Izzy, when are you going to get on that, huh? <laughs> oh, we. Oh, you mean like the review? Oh. Yeah. Steven Izzy review a porno. I'm waiting. Coming next week. <laughs> All right. There's that one we made, but. Well, as long as you review it and release it to the public at large. Yeah. Put it on YouTube Red. <laughs> Steve, I feel like your performance in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> I was like Christopher Lee and Howling too. I was <laughs> like, as soon as I was done, I was out. To be there. <laughs> well, and apparently, I just want to say too, since we're talking about Christopher Lee again, uh, Christopher Lee, of course, is in Gremlins too, right? The new batch. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Um, once he when he showed up on the set, apparently he immediately went up to director Joe Dante and said, "Listen, I was in Howling Two and I apologize." Spectacular. <laughs> oh, so good. But I mean, we're getting to the finale here. So they they find they get all their titanium bladed weapons because they got to rescue Jen now, and. Uh, Ben is like, you know, just give me a shotgun because I'm I'm the dude. I'm what is it, Brock Hard Castle or something? <laughs> Punch hard cheese, flex <laughs> sidearm. <laughs> Rock Hudson. Well, wait. Uh, but they go to uh, to stop Sturba and a lot of random werewolf deaths. This werewolf shooting spree. Yeah, just like insane werewolf shooting spree. And Sturba is using her her voice to, like, make monkeys again. I, man, fuck, this movie is fucking insane. <laughs> I don't, I can't even say any of this shit without it sounding like I'm just making it up. It's like, oh no, Brendan's having a stroke. <laughs> there's, there's monkeys and there's werewolves and, and, dw- and dwarfs. Werewolves, and punch archies. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm out, guys. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. You're done, eh? <laughs> and then he died. Thank you for your time, I, Christopher Lee. I tapped out. <laughs> so Nathan, what happens at this point? Oh my god, this movie. Um Don't well, forget about see. the va- the vampire bat mouth rape. The vampire yeah, the living wolf bat thing. Uh this is jump into somebody's mouth at some point. And rapes it. And yeah, <laughs> there's like a, a weird alien mouth rape thing that and <laughs> Oh, it's like... an S and M video for a second there. I, I, at one point, somebody actually managed to change their wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> the the this vampire bat thing basically sticks its dick in someone's mouth. Yeah, and and kills it, of course, because you know vampire bat dick. It's it'll 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 get you. And uh, this this dude dies and the best part about that though is later after all the shit is going down around around like around that guy the vampire bat pokes its head back out as if to say like the fuck's going on out there (laughs) (laughs) Uh, because we get the final showdown well first of all ben ben saves jen he kills uh two other he kills jimmy smiths and uh mariana i think her name is yeah Saves Jen, and then we get the the final showdown between Christopher Lee and uh, Stirba. So, who was surprised? Who thought the fight would go down like this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, it's exasperating, man. Like <laughs> she's she's throwing like lasers at him or something, as werewolves do. Yes, again, werewolf laser powers. Mm. Yeah. And we find out that they're their brother and sister. Yeah. Which But also yeah. lovers? Yeah, there's all those kind of this incestuous undertones with this whole thing, this exchange that they have. Yeah. It hey, director dude, if you wanted to make an incestuous porno, just just tell us, man. Just, just do it. Like I'm <laughs> You want to make a taboo three, but you know wait, what? Yeah, like a like a supernatural. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying I'll watch it, but like, you know, just 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 make the movie. It's be fine. Be upfront about it. Just be honest with yourselves be... and your audience. <laughs> no, no, the Czech extras uh, fucked on their own. I don't know what happened. I didn't direct them to fuck. But for some reason, <laughs> so Christopher Lee stabs her with a titanium blade, and they both, you know, of course they erupt into flames and blow up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not making this up guys if you were listening right now that is what happens in this movie everything we said is real and then starts the music video Ugh. howling 
<laughs> oh, uh, well, first of all, before, before we get to that, we get the uh, the great ending. Oh, my God. This. Why the hell would they so, be actively and happily celebrating Halloween? Well, Nathan, let the peop- let the good people know what happens here. Okay, so we get back to the States, and Punch Hard Cheese and the reporter lady are now cohabitating, all right? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, it's Halloween. You know, that, that holiday that uh, celebrates, like, vampires and wolves and werewolves rather and ghosts and goblins and all the things that everybody feels are like you know kind of bullshit but we know for a fact that werewolves are a real thing and we nearly died fighting them let's celebrate that holiday and not have any sort of ptsd about it whatsoever yeah and so this kid shows up to their door dressed <sighs> as a werewolf or he might be a werewolf we don't really know and, and of course, with a with an ape costume, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, it must be the kid from across the hall." Let's go see if the guy that lives there wants to come have a glass of wine on Halloween. Yep. And As one does. Yeah. So they go over there and knock on the door, <laughs> and the this man's acting is phenomenal, and he's a priest. Yes, he's a priest, and they say that they're like your uh, your child is over here, and this is literally what he says. He says, "My child, but I have no child. Yeah. I am not married. I am a bachelor, and I live alone." Fucking holy Dateline NBC, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, have you seen my pants? <laughs> have you seen? <laughs> well, I mean, I have a child, but it's not my child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my ward, you see. Just, uh, my ward. <laughs> you just sit down over there. Just have a seat over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, come on in. And they're like, a little bit later, maybe. He closes his door. They look to each other and quip, a lot later. Ha! <laughs> that's how it fucking That's how it fucking and ends. Then but... we get the video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So what is this? What is this end credit sequence uh, consist of, guys? Oh my god, a million bodice rips. Yes. So oh earlier in the movie, as we said, uh, Stirba uh, reveals <laughs> reveals her memories, and in this end credit sequence, they just play that. Uh, I wrote this down seventeen times. <laughs> Pay for them titties. You got to use them. Well, here's the thing. So a little behind the scenes in this one too. Just a little, <laughs> a little bit. A little Sybil bit. Danning, Sybil Danning went to uh, you know the premiere, uh, oh. and she and she knew, <laughs> like she obviously she did the nudity. She agreed to do the nudity in that one scene. She was fine with it. Whatever. It's she's like you know it wasn't exploitive. It's just one little bit, one little quick thing. Um, then the end <laughs> credits start. Originally, okay. Originally. They were there were twenty six shots of this during the end credits, <laughs> and apparently she just like she ran out of the premiere basically in tears, not knowing that this was gonna be you know the star of the last five minutes of the movie. Oh my god! <laughs> right? right? Yeah, insane. Went to the producers and said, "What the fuck?" And they were like, "You know what? We'll do something about it." So the, those those friendly producers cut it down to seventeen times. <laughs> fucking hollywood eh? that is yeah. that's ridiculous yeah it, it, it and it was basically like going along with the song it was like one two three rip one two three yeah. rip one two, it was it, it was it wasn't time to the music yeah. no and it, and it was like and every time they did it they cut to like someone's reaction to something completely different yeah. Yeah. yes the creepiest one was a couple times they cut back to the character who's supposed to be her brother grinning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so we, I think we're all in agreement. This was, it was kind of disturbing to do that. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. So guys, before we go to commercial, uh, this movie, Howling 2, your sister's a werewolf, werewolf bitch, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, would you, uh, would you recommend it for people? No. I wouldn't recommend it for cats. Nope. Oh, oh, Steve, that's a little harsh. <laughs> I mean, 
Caster, do you want to watch this movie? No, he, he's 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 shaking his head ferociously. I will say that I think <laughs> I think some of the I think some of the insanity in this movie is hilarious enough to watch, but it's certainly not a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. know what? I I am going to recommend people watch this. In fact, I'm going to say they should do what Steve and I plan on doing and have a full howling marathon. We go from one to five. Never stop. Never stop drinking. <laughs> Every time someone says howl, you take a shot. Which, by the way, by the third time the song comes on, I'm already completely Dead. shit faced. You've died? <laughs> you, mean, you mean by the third time the song comes on and approximately six minutes into the movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, when they're rolling the credits. Yeah, yeah. By the pale <laughs> Pale light of the moon. Oh, by the way, that song that song was written in two days. Written and composed in two days. <laughs> you know what? It's not that bad, bad, bad a song for that. <laughs> but now we're going to take a break. Commercials! We'll be right back! What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK, S-C-H-L-O-C-K, for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. <laughs> and we're back! I need <laughs> that break. Yeah. What a movie, eh, guys? Mm. Uh, we had fantastic. some laughs. We had some tears. I had some beers. <laughs> Use Not those the worst tears movie as... you've done on this here podcast. Uh, no, because we talked about Muck. Yeah, that's also, still that's yeah that that's that's what's the gold crazy is that shit movies on this podcast. But this <laughs> this movie's end credits may have had as much respect for women as Muck did as a as an overall movie. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a fair point. It is uh, uh Nathan. Uh yes, Brendan and Steve and Izzy. Yes, hello. Hello, hi. That's a good movie. Just kidding. It's time for a little low haiku. Yes, uh, it is. And what is a low haiku, Nathan? The perfect um, 17 syllables to uh, describe the the movie that we've just uh, discussed for the last hour plus. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, um, as we begin this segment, I'm gonna ask if our guests have something that they would like to read. If they do, they can. They by all means, you can start us off. Oh, I um, I actually brought a little uh, little something. Okay. Halloween two dot dot. Your sister is a werewolf. Repeated breast shot. Very good, very good, very good. Yes, sir. Uh, Izzy, do you have one as well? You know, I think I could come up with something. <laughs> okay. Nathan and Brendan made me watch Howling 2. I hate you all so much. Very apt, very apt. <laughs> Howling 2 or Showgirls 2? Which film is more competent? Get at us on Twitter. Uh, Nathan would you like to go yes the howling to God Sybil's boobs 17 times good lord why me All right, and uh, here's my little haiku. Filming werewolf flick in Czechoslovakia. Monkey masks a must. Thank you for the clapping and tongue tongue wagging. (laughs) (laughs) You know you love those mouth noises. Uh, Okay, we're out of there. 
Oh. You got stuck in the zone, Nathan. We did. We did. <laughs> but Nathan, at this point, what do we say? Well, we normally say... Don't take a word for us! <laughs> yes, do not take our word for it, folks. Rotten Tomatoes. Critics yeah. score 27%, which is high. What? That's very high. <laughs> Holy shit. That is right? High. What were you guys expecting? Like three? Six, maybe. We, yeah. we watched a couple zero Rotten Tomato scores uh, in the past month, and I would recommend them more than this movie. <laughs> now, to, now, to be fair... To be fair... Uh, um, this movie only has like ten reviews from critics, so <laughs> it's not like... <laughs> yeah, okay. Not that many of them watched it. <laughs> it's not certified rotten. One of them's the director. <laughs> uh, Philip Lessa. <laughs> but this, uh, yeah, so critics, twenty-seven uh, percent. Audience score, fifteen. What I what I enjoy here. So this isn't even on Rotten Tomatoes, but this is a little bit. Roger Ebert reviewed this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and he talked about Sybil Danning's work in the movie and uh, said, although it is close to it, it's not the worst movie Danning has ever made. Uh, he also says uh, he said no one presides over a ritual quite as well as Sybil Danning Um, (laughs) apparently during his version she only ripped her clothes off again uh, two more times during the credits Mm. and he said the scene where she rips open her dress is repeated twice during the closing credits providing the movie with its second and third interesting moments (laughs) (laughs) oh Ebert you pig Oh, uh, I love Roger Ebert. So, uh, I guess, uh, do you want to read the first one there, Nathan? Well, I'm going to grab one here from Matt Brunson from Creative Loafing. Like that okay. title. Yeah. Creative Loafing? Creative Loafing. It's a thing. Right. Second only to 1941's The Wolfman as the greatest werewolf flick ever made, 1981's The Howling remains a high watermark in the lycanthrope cinema. That's why the very existence of this wretched movie is so depressing. <laughs> um, this one is uh, this one is a positive review. Wait, I've had one. Oh no, this is not. No, never mind. <laughs> this is a negative review. Uh, this is from uh, Heather Wixon of Daily Dead. It may not be a flawless effort by any means, but I can't help but adore a film that gave us Sybil Danning as Queen of the Werewolves, put Christopher Lee in a new wave nightclub, and also gave the modern lichen mythology a bit of an unexpected twist. I guess that is a positive review. Yeah, that's yeah. positive. Yep. Oh, boy. Um, and then the only other... I just want to read one other critic's one, uh, and then I'll get a few audience in here. Uh, this is from Ken Hankey of the Mountain Express. <laughs> course that famous uh review magazine right <laughs> he says must be one of those movies christopher lee means when he says he never made any horror pictures huh <laughs> <laughs> uh jc matchek the third from pop matters writes the now infamous closing credit scene features Sybil Danning's rapid-fire striptease replayed no less than 17 times. Danning was livid at the exploitation. The director was not. (laughs) Uh, Some great audience uh, bits here. Uh, So this person uh, gave it um, four stars out of five. And they said, this is what they said here. Um, I was run over by a car less than an hour after watching this. And whilst legally it was not my fault, I find it hard to believe these two events were not connected. (laughs) 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 Um, Four stars. Another person says, uh, uh, the five stars, total underrated gem crammed with gore genuine gothic transylvanian settings and werewolf orgies pisses all over the original five fucking stars yeah well, she does have a point there pissing all over the original <laughs> I got, yeah i got a four and a half one here that Ooh. says and i'm gonna say this the way i'm assuming the way this person actually talks 
A strange but ultimately enjoyable flick with plenty of guts, boobs, and goth music. Andrew DC. <laughs> yeah. Four and a half stars. A.D. Clay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is, and then this is the last one here. This is interesting. Um, see what you guys think about this. Uh, font equals century gothic. Size equals one. Color equals black. B font equals Tahoma. Size equals two. Dot 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 dot. Size font B color size font. Oh, and they oh, put hell two point oh. What, what are we talking about here? I and I think that... Spoony makes it clear, so it's about as obvious as yours. <laughs> oh, this sorry. That was the review of the movie Howling dot com. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Steven Izzy, yes. you guys sat through this movie for us. Oh, we sure yes. did. And uh, your lives are all the better for it. Can't wait for the sequels. By the way, number three has an even lower IMDb score. Oh, Coming soon. Howling 3, the marsupials, rated PG-13. Ugh. Not right? even boobs. Nope. Ouch. Howling. Howling. But but guys, you guys have a podcast, right? Oh, we do. Yeah. What? Wait, oh. you didn't tell me about this. <laughs> well, occasionally I record uh, Izzy's rants. Uh, <laughs> some... <laughs> my drunken drunk movie rants without my knowledge. <laughs> tell tell the good called... folks. Tell the good folks where they can listen to you uh, talk about movies. Yes, it's on our podcast, Everything I Learned From Movies, at eilfm.podbean.com. Uh, every Tuesday, we have amazing episodes about, eh, we'll say, bad to questionable movies. Um, and then on Friday episodes, we occasionally have mini episodes or celebrity interviews. What? Like, what kind of celebrities are we talking to? Oh, well, we recently talked to John C. McGinley. Who's uh, that, Steve? You talked to Coop? Dr. Cox. You know, Dr. Cox. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so that's John Stan. C. Riley. Yeah, Stan from Stan Against Evil. Uh, they see Dana Gould's coming up. Yeah, uh, Thomas Jane. We, yeah, Thomas Jane, Sven Ol Thorson, uh, S.S. Wilson, uh, Alexandra Paul. That's right, one of the Baywatch ladies. Yeah. Um, I like how you almost said chicks and then said ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a classy Tara bitch. Sands. I'm a classy guy. Tara Sands, the voice of the American Bulbasaur from Pokemon. That's right. Yeah, a lot of a lot of great past interviews um, and future ones coming up. So uh, check us out. Yeah, and uh, occasionally we have uh, Brandon and Nathan on our podcast to review classic movies and uh, yeah. Showgirls too. Oh, but we get uh, ridiculously drunk when that happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lake House. If you want to listen to this show, but with these two drunk, that's our show. <laughs> I think you guys was... are coming on in November for an episode, too. Oh, we know. oh yeah, Nathan, I signed us up. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Find out live with Nathan. <laughs> uh, help us celebrate Movember. Yeah. So, um, before we get to plugging our show, Nathan, mm. I believe we have some, uh, some business to take care of first. Yes. Our next movie will be airing after a certain substance becomes legal in Canada. Yes. <laughs> yes. So in two weeks, what is our clue for our next film? Our clue two weeks is. Yeah. What's the hassle, man? Are you trying to hassle us? There we go. That's it. And figure so. that out nerds <laughs> uh but yeah that's in two weeks um so nathan mm -hmm. i feel like montrose monkeyton might have something to say about this movie as well as promoting his uh you know his stuff oh yes he has got so he's got some opinions okay well let's hear from him again. hello it's a good friend montrose monkeyton the third here i would just like to take the time now to to uh, uh tip my hat to Brendan and Nathan for uh, finally reviewing a movie that featured people uh, as simians. It was really, really quite an honor uh, to see them taking that bold step. Oh, uh, Montrose, this is actually a, uh, a werewolf movie. No, that can't be. They, they, they all looked like monkeys. They, 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 they were, they were werewolves. No, I'm pretty sure they were apes. I mean, okay, tomato, tomato. Mm, I don't think that's the case. I, I uh, feel they were apes. What is your 
father have to say about this? Don't get that bastard into this whole situation. Hello again, Montrose. Go away! It is I. No. Montrose Jr. Terrible. I don't know if you recognized me in this movie, but I played a small part. See? Monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Montrose Monkeyton, uh, M- Montrose Monkeyton's father is a refurbished Planet of the Apes monkey. And in a time, in a, a time before bastard. Die Hard, we did unspeakable things for money. Here. <laughs> we will get him out of here. I would be more than glad to finish what I was starting with. Okay, okay go to ahead. Which I Monster. say, good day, sir. It's good day to you. Sorry about that. I'm terribly sorry. I said good day. I said good day. Steve, get him out of here. Anybody says good day, I get the last good day. Good day. I said good day. Good day. <laughs> He infuriates me so. Anyhow. God damn, he's getting fast in his old age. Steve, get that monkey out of my house. You're not supposed to lock him up in the bathroom. <laughs> yes. You may follow me uh, on the Twitter, at Montrose the Third. That's the number 3RD. Uh, you can also follow along uh, with me on Facebook, uh, Montrose Monkey the Third Esquire and Friends, uh, as well as viewing my YouTube channel, uh, Montrose Monkington TV, uh, for all kinds of delightful videos uh, from yours truly. Uh, I'm telling you, these were apes, not werewolves. But I will. We will have to agree to disagree. I am taking my leave of you now. Thank you. More later. And of course, if you want to follow, uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can find us at WWTT Podcast on Instagram as well. The same thing. You can search for us on Facebook. Just search What Were They Thinking. We have a Facebook group. What Were They Thinking Interactive. Uh, you can find us on all the podcatchers: uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. You know all that good stuff. And we have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash WWTT podcast. Lots of great uh, rewards and prizes there if you want to sign up. And we have a Redbubble page where you can buy a merch. And I believe that's it. I think so. So, Nathan. Yes, Brennan. First of all, th- again, Stephen Izzy, thank you very much. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, thank you for having us. You two so are a couple much. of gems. It's not what I thought of, you were going to say, uh, but I appreciate you saying. I'm you giving myself more of a titanium <laughs> stabbing weapon, but you know. You, can, you two are a couple of titanium blades. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Nathan, did, I mean, I'm assuming you have maybe a couple of questions. A few. <laughs> yes? Okay, Go well, on. in a movie called The Howling, two... Your sister's a werewolf. <laughs> there were so many people who were clearly vampires. And in the movie where you would go to Transylvania, the home of vampires, uh, to, to fight these werewolves, who, by the way, look an awful lot like um, a Planet of the Apes. Apes. Um, in a movie where... Christopher Lee is just so disinterested and and where we get to see Sybil's boobs a billion times and, and in a movie where the body hair for the uh, uh, werewolves look like, you know, just a bunch of random Eastern European folk decide to stop shaving for a week or two. And in a movie where the hero is from Space Mutiny. I just, I have to ask, Mm -hmm. what were they thinking? Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley. And I'm Justine. And And we we make make up the Cutaways Cutaways Podcast. We're watching the good, the bad, and the essentials of the romantic comedy genre. So far, we've fallen in love with Cary Grant, met up with our terrible friend, pal Joey, and had the desire to run our fingers through Patrick Dempsey's hair. Join our slumber party for your ears every other week, brought to you in stereo from our blanket fort in Hollywood, California. You can find and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcatcher. Our digital blanket fort can be found at thecutaways.com. If you are the social butterfly types, you can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as at Cutaways Podcast. Bye! 
It's late, it's time, let's check our cue, baby. Pair it with a couple brews, baby. We love good movies. We love the bad ones, too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh, yeah. Banner, 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 banner. Banner, 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 banner. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes of gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy with your friend Stephen Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Hi, I'm Ellen and I'm scared we exist in the Matrix I'm Jaslyn and I'm bad at ad-libbing and you're listening to High, High Expectations, Expectations, the promo. For our international listeners, you can appreciate our cute New Zealand accents. For our local listeners, you might bump into us in the street three times in the same hour. Our podcast is about pop culture, sexuality, relationships, interesting hobbies, banter and ragging on each other. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict, or anywhere you might like to find podcasts. Yay, please subscribe. Goodbye.